Hi guys, welcome, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'll be breaking down how I customize and install my frontal wigs from start to finish. I'm gonna be taking everything step by step, starting with my knots. I'll be showing you guys how I bleach my knots and even how I fix my knots when I over bleach them. Then we're gonna get into the plucking and the customization. And y'all know how I feel about laying my wigs, okay? I do not play. And lastly, I will be showing you in great detail the whole installation process, including the ball cap method and a whole baby hair tutorial using the Arrogante baby hair method. It's gonna be a great video, so just go ahead and set aside those 25 minutes to learn a few new things about how to lay your wig. I promise it's gonna be worth your time. So the unit I'm working with today is from Nadula Hair and the only thing that came in the box were the wig and an extra elastic band you can attach to the wig. This is their Brazilian Jerry Curly 13x4 frontal wig which I got in 24 inches with a 180% density and a medium cap size. This is regular lace by the way and I really wanted to make that clear because I'm always working with HD lace but I really want you guys to understand that you can get that scalp look and you can get that melted look even without HD lace. I always start by bleaching my knots and although I always dread this part, bleaching your knots is very important. This is everything you're going to need to bleach your knots. I'm using the Clairol BW2 Dusted Extra Strength Bleach and the Clairol 40 Volume Developer. I also got this mixing bowl at the beauty supply and I'll be spreading and mixing the bleach with a butter knife. This is the key. It's something about those butter knives that really does it for the girls, okay? And if you have a Chick-fil-A butter knife, go ahead and use that because for some reason, the Chick-fil-A butter knives always give me the best results. The bleach tub does come with a scooper, so two scoops of bleach is always perfectly enough to bleach the knots on a whole frontal. If you buy the little packets, one pack is enough for a frontal. When it comes to the developer, you want to pour and mix a little at a time. The rule of thumb here is to create a pasty consistency. You don't want the mixture to be running to the point where it bleeds through the lace. So you see me pour a little bit, mix it, see how the texture is looking, and then if I need to add more, I go ahead and do so. It's better to make a thick mixture and have to go back and bleach your knots twice than to have a runny mixture and have to fix the over bleach knots later. So just stick to making it thick, especially if you're a beginner. I also I also suggest wearing gloves. I know I'm not wearing any, but I'm just a savage, so don't try to be like me. I'm spraying the fronts of the hair with water, and I'm doing this because I need the hair to be pushed back so we don't accidentally bleach the hair instead of the knots. Then I'm gonna flip my hair inside out, and when you flip it, make sure to check on the front sole on the inside and make sure all the hairs are pushed back like I said earlier because you do not want the hair to touch the bleach. I'm gonna start spreading the bleach right on top of the lace. You don't wanna be heavy handed with this at all. Also, you wanna start from the back because the front knots are really, really fragile, and I always tell y'all this, the knots in the back are thicker, so, you can be a little more heavy handed, but when you get to the front, definitely tread lightly and be as soft as you can. And you can double check to make sure all the knots in the front are coated in the bleach as you see me doing in the video because you do not want to leave any knots behind child no knots left behind okay moving on i usually let my knots bleach for about 30 to 45 minutes depending on how fast the hair takes the bleach and you can gauge this just by checking on the frontal and you'll literally be able to see when the color has lifted because it'll be blonde 
After the 30 to 45 minutes, we're gonna wash out the developer. Along with shampoo and conditioner, you're also gonna need a purple neutralizing shampoo. You can also get this at your local beauty supply. This is especially necessary if you're dark skin because the purple shampoo will help tone down that brassiness and yellow color, so it'll be more suitable to my skin color. The best way to do this is to fill a bowl with water, pour the purple shampoo in there, completely submerge the frontal into the bowl, and let it sit for about four to five minutes. I got this trick from my friend Alexia who got it from Peak Mail and it is genius. Once that's done, I'm gonna wash it out and shampoo and condition like normal. I also like to define the curls while the hair is wet and how beautiful are those curls by the way. So as y'all can see, the knots are bleached very well and it's giving very much scalp. But I did get a bit of bleach on the hair and I would like to say I did it on purpose just so I could show you guys how to fix it. But that would just be a lie. I used the Adore dye in Sienna Brown and a spoolie. You can use a darker color or black. I just like using Sienna Brown because I like the way it looks. You're only gonna need a little bit of the dye depending on how much you need to fix. I'm picking up teeny, teeny, teeny bits of the dye at a time and brushing it through the parts that need a touch of color. I let that sit for like 30 minutes, which isn't really, really necessary. You can do 15 minutes. I just like to cover all grounds and make sure that the color really, really penetrates through the hair. Then I wash it out and as you can see, it makes the biggest difference. You have to try this if you over bleach your knots. Some people like to just fix it with like mascara, but that's more of like a quick fix. If you want a permanent fix, then this is definitely the one for you. Now it's time to pluck and style. I'm wetting the hair before I pluck because I love plucking curly hair while it's wet. I'm not doing anything special with the plucking because we're going to be plucking later on when we play with the baby hairs. I'm also doing an updo so for now I'm just doing a light pluck and I let the hair dry a little bit and plucked it again because I also want to see if it looks right when it's dry. <laughs> After I get my desired look, I'm gonna seal everything with my wax stick and then follow that with my hot comb to give it that silky look. And there we have it. That's our girl. Now we can install her. Here is the wig, y'all. You see that hairline? Like, laid it looks so good don't play with me anyway we about to install this baby jumping right into the ball cap method i'm putting the cap on and placing it over my ears then i'm gonna cut holes in my ears and pull the holes around my ears i sprayed the glue on my lace before cutting the ear holes but you don't want to do that make the ear holes before you spray the glue that's very important now i'm going to spray the gossipy spray all over my edges make sure your edges are covered save your edges a lot of people like to skip the ball cap method and I used to be one of those people, but if you want to save your edges and you want your install to last, I highly suggest using the ball cap method and I'll explain why in a minute. I'm using my blow dryer on the cool setting to push the cap right into my skin and I'm going to do that until the cap is completely stiff and dry. Again, I'm getting ahead of myself because you want to rub your foundation on the cap before you cut the cap. 
I'm using my NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop foundation in the color Walnut and it pretty much matches me perfectly. I always use it for my caps and my wigs. After I've gotten the foundation all over the cap, I'm gonna now cut it. I usually just tie the pieces at the back and tuck the knot in the cap. And now I'm just going back and making sure the cap is neatly cut and I'm going back with the foundation to make sure the cap is covered and completely coated in the foundation. Once I'm satisfied with the way it's looking, I'm gonna use my alcohol pad, which I got at a pharmacy, to clean the perimeters around the cap to make sure we have a nice dry canvas to place the glue on. And that is the finished bow cap look, you guys. She's giving very much bald beauty. You see her. I'm using that same foundation again. This time, I'm rubbing it all over the lace, all over. This is a great alternative to tinting your lace. It'll give you the perfect blend every time because it is your perfect foundation color. Rub it all over, all over the inside, and right in front of the hair. <laughs> I'm pushing the lace back because we're about to go in with the glue. I'm using my meltdown glue and when I first started wearing frontals I would do this part in sections but I found that it is so much easier and more convenient to just do the little dots and spread it all over at once. Just make sure you do a wide layer and spread it very, very well. Also, try really hard to mostly get this on the cap. This is key because your skin produces oils which can mess with the glue and make your lace lift, but the cap doesn't produce oils. So if your lace is laying mostly on the cap, it'll last longer. This is another reason why I was saying earlier that the ball cap method makes your installs last. After the first layer of glue, I let it dry clear using my blow dryer on the cool setting. And once that's dry, I do the next layer. I usually do three to five layers depending on how long I plan to have the wig on. Three layers will last you a week and five layers could last you two weeks depending on how well you do it. It's very possible if you take care of your install. the glue is dry clear I'm gonna place my lace right on top of the glue and I'm using that line I made in the middle of my forehead to make sure the frontal is aligned right in the middle I'm cutting a slit into the lace so I can bring the middle piece forward before I get the sides it kind of just makes it easier for me also make sure to look at yourself straight ahead so you can make sure the frontal is even on both sides and not lopsided because I low-key accidentally made this lopsided <laughs> but I'm using the rat toe comb to press the lace onto my skin and then parting out the baby hairs I plan to use I'm gonna wrap my frontal with the hair wrap so the glue has time to lay and stick before we do our baby hairs. And I kept the wrap on for about 10 minutes. I don't know what happened to the clip of me cutting the lace and I'm so sorry you guys. When you cut the lace, just make sure you cut it in a jagged motion. I kinda cut it straight in this video. Please just, everything I'm doing in this video is just so wrong, but you get the gist, you, you get the gist. I'm plucking the frontal a little bit more as I told y'all we would do earlier cause now it's on my head and I can pluck the look that I desire, which is what I did. When I'm done, I'm gonna press everything back once again using my hot comb. I'm cutting those baby hairs down with the razor because obviously baby hairs are short.
What I like to do is look at baby hair inspiration on Instagram and I have a whole folder where I collect baby hair inspiration, hair inspiration, all of that. So whenever I need help with like figuring out what I wanna do to my hair, I just look in there. These were the videos that inspired me this time and I usually just look at those to get an idea and then I go from there. So now I'm plucking the baby hairs because they were way too thick and they definitely needed to be thinned out a whole lot more. I'm not a fan of thick baby hairs but I also like them to look natural and sometimes that can mean they need to be a little full. <laughs> Once I liked the density of the baby hairs, I went right in with my olive oil wrapping setting mousse to start molding the baby hairs. I pretty much just play with them, swoop in one direction, swoop in the other direction, just to see which one I'm feeling. That face right there is me realizing that I bought a mini flat iron earlier because I wanted to try out the arrogant tay trick where you curl the baby hairs with a flat iron, but then I forgot to do it. So I still considered molding the baby hairs, but after a while, I did the flat iron trick. You're supposed to curl the baby hairs completely with the flat iron. I was just bumping the ends in the direction I want them in, and although it worked I suggest completely curling the hairs going upward because that'll give you a better hold if that makes any sense After I'm done with the flat iron, I'm gonna start molding my baby hairs again. And you see me cutting with the razor when I feel the hairs are too long. That's another great trick. Mold the baby hairs and then hold them in place how you want them to look. And then you can just go ahead and cut with the razor right on top of your skin if it's too long. As far as the style of the baby hairs, you just have to do what fits your aesthetic. This is how I wanted mine to look. And so that's what I did. You just have to figure out how you want yours to look because everybody has different tastes when it comes to baby hairs. You just have to play with it. And for me, I love the cute little sideburn swoops because I feel like they give your baby hairs a lot of character. I also did some swoopity swoops, and I'm calling them swoopity swoops because I don't know what else to call them. But they're basically the spiral swoops, which is one of the ones that you see like in the middle. <laughs> the look I want and everything looks nice and dandy I'm gonna lay them down once again with the wrap for 10 minutes while I waited for that I went in with my mousse to define the curls and I brushed through the hair a couple times with my fake denim and brush I'm gonna add water later but I wanted to do this just to calm the hair down a little bit <laughs> After I've done that, I can now take the scarf off and everything looks so good. Like, oh my gosh, do y'all see the baby hairs? Do you see the material? But we're still not done because it's time to style. I played around with the ponytail a little bit cause I was trying to figure out the best way to make the ponytail thick without the track showing. This is a 13 by four frontal and the frontal is way shorter than the tracks. So if you're gonna do this style, you also need to add hair from the track. I just make sure to pick up the hair from the middle so that the frontal would cover the sides. You won't see my tracks, but I'll still have enough hair to make the ponytail thick. <laughs> I'm doing a half up, half down look, so I'm using my Eco Styler Gel to slick the hair back before I make my ponytail. I didn't really need much because the hair was wet and pretty much sleek already. <laughs> So 
So I just brushed the hair to make sure there aren't any knots. <laughs> I'm gonna start parting out the section I will be using for the ponytail. I'm securing the ponytail with a rubber band and sneaking it down once again with my baby hair brush. And I don't know why I'm using that tiny little baby hair brush, but it's working for me as you can see. I'm gonna take a small section from the ponytail, which I suggest you take from the back. Don't take it from the front or the side like I did. Also, as I said earlier, the frontal hairs are shorter, so I also try to use those short hairs to wrap the ponytail. I wrapped the hair around the ponytail and secured it with two bobby pins. I styled this ponytail a couple of times and this time I made it a low pony but I also did another look which you see in my thumbnail where I did a high pony but I'll show y'all that later I'm using these super cute Ankara scrunchies that I got from my cousin's company at She's Rooted US on Instagram. The scrunchies are so cute and I got three different sizes with three different Ankara prints. She also makes headbands and everything is handmade with the real Ankara. Make sure you guys check out her Instagram and support the family. Oh my gosh, guys, we're actually done. Isn't that crazy? Like, that's everything. We're done. I have to show y'all everything with the beat face. The baby hairs are popping, the curls are popping, the install is popping, my lip gloss is popping, okay? It's the tears on the beat. Everything is set. Look at those baby hairs. Like, a pussy hole could never. This hair was so nice. I wore it for a month and a half, installed it three times, and did two different ponytail looks with it. This was my favorite one. I just made the ponytail higher and I pulled out those short frontal hairs to give it a cute curly ponytail look. I'm definitely gonna be doing this look again. And I'll also be selling two units that look just like this on my Instagram. So make sure you follow me on Instagram if you want to buy one of these units. All the hair links will be in my description if you guys are interested. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that this this video was helpful to you guys I wanted to pack this video with as much information as possible this is literally my secret sauce like I'm literally putting my business out in the streets you might even want to screen record this video because I actually might delete this <laughs> like, I just put y'all on so much game but anyway I'll see y'all in my next video bye